right, there we go. Let's see. Hello. Excellent. All right, we got Amethyst. So I've been invited to speak. I feel so official. Also, everyone else here, welcome. Um, so I'll go ahead and just read off the question, say who sent it, if anyone sent it, or so-and-so sent this question and all that jazz, and we'll just go through and answer. I have no preference whether or not I like pineapple on pizza. I do appreciate olives on pizza, but also my opinions are invalid, rambly. Um, great, great. Okay, our new rule, um, Gray's not allowed to answer any pizza related <laughs> questions. All right, okay. All yeah, right. According no. to Mr. Mr. Ken, you doesn't does not appreciate right, you're just you're just you're just wrong all right all right can i swear up here <laughs> right, my, you're, not, you're not allowed to you're not allowed to give your opinions regarding pizza you lost that right actually like no i feel like you'll hate my too, pizza and i prefer more. chicago style pizza the most yeah so, i yeah, feel the, the cheese therefore. off of my pizza <laughs> yo just okay, no pizza mind. questions just no pizza questions no worries i know clearly ken's Ken is the pizza connoisseur for some reason, so... For some reason. It's not like I'm the pizza connoisseur, it's like you're just you're just wrong about pizza. I know I'm a food connoisseur. I don't... I don't... Is Shy gonna be here too, or no? Probably not. Um, basically, it was just whoever was available, we can add in, but... Uh, that's why I added earlier, it's like, alright, who wants to be in this thing? <laughs> Good thing you did it this weekend and not next weekend, because I'll be away. Ah. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. All right. It well, is sweltering where I am, and I am miserable. How long is it going to go? Oh, seven to low. How long is it going to go on for? Probably not that long, honestly. It's like we didn't. We only got like uh, 11-ish questions submitted, so. Looks like we got a lot more than that. No, we got only... Through the forms, we only have 11 submissions, so. Mm. And then, like, two of them I'm not going to answer just because they're a little goofy, so. What are the two questions you don't want to answer? Well, the two questions is, uh, <laughs> one is just one dude asking my opinion as per usual for for nothing, just what's my opinion. Um, and then the other one is... <clears throat> McQuail asking if he could be on the stream, which he, he already did, so there we are. <laughs> we do have a couple that are more, well, there's just one, I guess. There's one that's kind of more towards the characters themselves, like, in character, question mark? But it does have a second part that's more applicable to, like, what we can give our input on. So I have, unfortunately, we can't really answer the in character question just because it's probably going to be... Not really spoilery, but just because we don't have we don't have the well we don't have our characters shown and introduced quite yet properly. Yeah, I, I think the only the bird in the room. Give me two seconds. Here, who's a voice actor and whose character has been introduced is me. All right, so someone asked uh, what led us to choose a Stowo for our music theme. Honestly, that was just more of I didn't really want to go with a um, just kind of copyright free song in general. We just wanted something that would be, you know, associated with the series and something made specifically for the series. And I did want to keep it in the community. Sure, we could have hired just like a Fiverr artist or whatever, but I also knew, wanted to uh, find an artist who was familiar or had experience with um, working under the the copyright rules that are required for the, um, for, you know, SCP, the CC 3.0 stuff. Technically, this does go in part with another question someone else asked, so I might as well just answer these both while I'm in here. We're talking about talking about a Stowo. Um, another person asked, "It's a, how does it feel to have one of the best SCP music artists uh, to compose some of the OSTs for the series?" Once again, pretty great. <clears throat> they're they're really great to work with. Um, just an absolute gem, honestly. But uh, um, absolutely, yes. And I'm it's glad they're cool because they're going to be voicing. Probably a character later in the series, but uh, you'll, you, you, we won't, uh, we, I won't spoil that for us. They, yeah, they just have a really cool vibe to their their music, and yeah, for sure, there's probably going to be more OSTs that they're going to get hired to make for us. But um, for now, we have a total of three songs. One's currently being made, worked on. We have crammed, and we have our main theme. So I do highly recommend commissioning them. Um, 
they <laughs> it's like they they do prefer other projects than just SCP stuff. So if you got like a game or anything like that, they're open for work for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hiring us though was honestly more of like a just a great decision. Like I think I found out when he was like uh, just in VC and I was like, oh, you're the guy that got that great hired. Yep. Yeah, I'm not saying it was a bad decision, but it was kind of funny. Yeah, I did have like a list of three artists I would would have liked to uh, face, but Estoa was my top pick. So, and uh, it did take me like a good week and a half to kind of hype myself up to even ask. But uh, yeah, if we I asked, then you, they said yeah. So here we are. Is Son of a Breach based on a true story by Scotty Vallis? Yeah. Yeah, actually, it's yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, it actually uh, happened. It is real, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, it was all based on a true story. Based on the true events that have occurred. You, you just weren't there, okay? All right. It was so wild, man. Will the half kitty eventually get his second back half? Josie will probably never get her second back half. Um, honestly, at least she she seems to be doing okay without it. That's that's part of her of who she is. She's she, she if you give her a second if you give her a second half, she's not Josie anymore. She just a cat. She is a cat, hundred percent Josie. Yeah, it defeats the whole purpose of Josie. It's a part of who she is. It's who she is. And right. maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll find the second half like. Like, Josie won't get it back, but maybe they'll, like, find the second half in the show and, like, something funny will happen. Who's to know? Anything is possible. Alright. And someone else asked, uh, what's your favorite part of this project slash series? What's your least favorite thing to work on? I would say probably my favorite part of the series is currently just all the people I've been getting to work with, honestly. Um, I'm usually kind of a hermit. And it's, despite, you know, this project being brought together with a bunch of different individuals from basically all corners of the internet slash country slash globe at this point, they've all been pretty good peeps so far, I'd say. Least favorite thing to work on is the rigs. They're very tedious. I both, it's a love-hate relationship. I'd be fixing things and breaking things and then fixing things again. And then trying to actually use them is a pain too. But, yeah. <laughs> As for me, I mainly do voice acting at this point but my favorite thing of course is the people i've been working with and my least favorite thing is uploading my voice lines to the to the google drive See, i do not google like drive. it <laughs> my answer is probably a little bit similar to gray i think my favorite part of this is just the, the whole experience of working on like a big collaborative project for the first time you know meeting like meeting and maybe being able to network with a lot of pretty cool people and just brainstorming with other people to make a cool story. And I'd say my least favorite part of this is probably um, the parts that require actual work. And uh, I don't like that. <laughs> the parts that require actual, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like doing stuff. That, that That's very true. That's fair. I think we'd all rather have our work just magically appear in front of us. But we actually have to do work to put our put our project out into the world you know i wish i could just like have the images in my brain be projected onto the screen and call it a day but sadly that's uh, not the case anyways next question What's the whole story behind starting Son of a Breach? Unfortunately, our guy who technically started this whole thing is not here at the moment. He is yep, he occupied, went, apparently. <laughs> he went so, to the store by milk, and he, we never heard from him again. Sad times. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't yeah. here. Oh, it's like, Hippie's the one who technically made the original Reddit comments about saying, oh yeah, we're going to start our own confinement with Blackjack and Hookers and all that jazz. But, um... Pit.p is the one who made the server, and he's in the server, but he's, he, like Ken said, he's the dad who went to go get milk and uh, didn't return. So I'm watching a Netflix documentary about uh, m about mob bosses, actually, so uh, so it's my headcanon that he got taken out by the mafia. Oh my gosh. Like I said, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Based, on, based on a true story, it's been uh, 
Yeah, pizza. How about, how about you two guys tell about your personal experience with joining Son of a Rage? Maybe that'll, that'll be interesting. All right. Um, I'm here for the semi-early days. It was like last June. Like, we're coming up on the first anniversary of it, actually. Well, it was like, we, we passed it now, actually. I was on Reddit when I was, it was like, basically the fallout of, you know, confinement. And I came across the thread with a comment on it, and it was discussing this, a new series, Son of a Breach. And I was really interested in it. <laughs> I actually came in there offering to do character design for the very character I voice now. So, um, yeah, my character's been there since the beginning, and so have I, pretty much. I was one of the first few. I'd say, like, one of the first ten people to really, really join. Yeah. Let's see, I... Commented under Hippie's first joke comment saying it's like, we have the technology, we can remake it, we can make it better, all that jazz. Because at the time, I had just gotten the animation software we're using now, and I was still learning it. I had just maybe gotten it a month prior, and I hadn't really had anything to apply it to yet. So I was like, eh, why not? I'll like, go ahead. I was originally just going to be like, sure, I'll fill in here and there, maybe, you know, as any filler animations or things like that and uh, now I'm the lead animator I happen to be the first animator that probably hopped on to this project from my understanding uh yeah uh I joined probably I, I joined uh, I joined definitely later than these two uh it was like July um J July I'm gonna make up a date uh July 5th last year <laughs> and um and uh, I, I haven't been really, I wasn't really into SCP at the time. Like, my fixation on the whole fandom goes in, like, waves. So I was in, like, one of those waves that I wasn't really paying attention to it. And then my friend was like, hey, Ken, I know you I know you like uh, SCP. Here, here's an SCP meme. And that and it was really, it was a really bad meme, too. But it got me, in, like, mildly interested in the whole fandom again. And I just started, like, looking around on Reddit for SCP-related content. Which led me to con the confinement subreddit, and then I found this subreddit where I saw the Discord link to this open on it. So I, I I hopped in there, and I you know just I, I guess I state I stated my purpose and stuff, and I just said I wanted to help. And what fall next was like a, a whole lot of nothing actually, because um, those were like the early days where um, we where we were like to say we were in anarchy, because because uh, yeah, uh, Pete's already gone out to milk at this point, like you know for, for a while now. And so, um, so he, and he was the only one with power, so no one else had, like, Discord authority to do anything, and, like, everyone had, like, 12 different ideas for, like, a show, and no one wanted to, like, actually coordinate with anybody else, so no one could get really get anything done, I think, uh, multiple people were, like, getting ready to call it off already, and I, I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but I, I did come up with the idea of just, like, uh, just, like, just joining a VC, and seeing how much people can get and just like trying to organize something and that led to the uh draft of the first pilot and uh now 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 we're here it, it's like we're let we're, we're still pretty much um we're still in anarchy to a degree but hey we have people in power that actually um use that power and uh we have a core team and stuff so we're like less less chaos and more like seven like raccoons in a trench coat so that's my that's my story that's a perfect description of us. Pretty much. It's like, honestly, though, I think like a, a, a element of chaos is going to be a constant in this series, just because it is always going to be a community project. It's always going to be led by all sorts of different people. But it is definitely like important to have at least some organization, even if there is like, oh, it's going to be community co-op ran. So. Right. I like to describe our, our project as organized chaos. Our next question was brought by Ink Slayer. Uh, unfortunately, so the first part of the question is more directed towards the characters. We can't really answer Ink character quite yet just because it uh, not all of our characters have been introduced, so it just kind of sound like us yapping about OCs for a minute. But um, <laughs> basically the question is, Dear team, what's the most dangerous SCP you've had to face in had the stupidest weakest? Unfortunately, I can't answer that. But... Um, the other question... The no, other great, question. no, great. This is based on a true story. What's what's the most uh, dangerous SCP you, you've had to face, huh? That's a, soup from all gray. R.I.P. No. <laughs> wow, don't, doesn't even know the number. Fake, real fake fan. Oh, 
I'm series one trash. What can I say? That is series one. What are you talking about? Ah, oh, shit. You're right. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> okay. Um, the other part of the question is, what is each team member's favorite SCP? Hmm. I think my favorite would have to be SCP-1730, What Happens to Site 13. That one is a good one. You want to explain why that's your favorite? or? Oh, sure. It was one of the first that I ever really read and actually paid attention to. I really love the horror aspect of it. Um... Yeah, I really got fi- like I really got fixated it on a while, and honestly, it's just a good SCP. I don't really care if it's one of the longest. What about you guys? Your turn, Gray. Okay, so um, I would probably say my S- favorite SCP is O seven nine, the dumb old AI, just because it was probably one of my first ones I really got into way back in the day. Starting a dumb Tumblr ass blog for it. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, you're, it's just my favorite. And it's just stuck there forever. Not even, like, the best written or anything like that either. It's just, just, uh, stuck with, it's like a little brain worm. It's just in my head forever now, so. I don't really have a favorite one. Uh, you know, it's, it's been, again, it's been a while since, like, really, you know, deep delving into the wiki just, just by myself to read. I mean, I, I can rapid fire fire through a couple SCPs I think are pretty cool. Um, it's not really much of an SCP itself, but the uh, whole Ouroboros proposal um, is, is really good. It's probably one of the best written 001s, I think. E- even e- even with like the whole boss boss rush um, final chapter, it's pretty goofy. And I, I will say two of SCPs I think are really underrated. SCP four 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 is a is a really funny one that is a not a JSCP. It's a main series or. And that was submitted for the four thousand contest, and it's like it's like really funny, but it it I, I wouldn't say the most. I mean, before the five thousand series, it was, but probably the most like political one. I, I'd say out there, the the whole thing reads from like those era of like um jib jab where they have the 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 different like uh politicians like magazines animated, but it it is it is pretty funny. And it's it's honestly it's, it, there's a whole war in the comments over it if like if they actually wanted this to win, and uh, thirty ten is another pretty good underrated one. I'm don't feel like explaining myself for this one, so just just go read it if you're curious. The, the Volgan has a video on it. If you watch that, if you're too lazy. Oh, well said. Well said. Alrighty, let me see. Got. One more question, and then after this one, we'll probably open up the floor for everyone else's open questions, which I'll have to go through the comments and see what the heck everyone was asking. So, someone asked, uh, I really liked all the frame-by-frame animation. It looks so good. Why don't you guys do more frame-by-frame animation? Yeah, Gray, why don't we? (laughs) Well, mostly just due to time constraints is the main thing. We are planning on doing a mix of both frame-by-frame and tween animation, so... Well, I do have most of the major parts of the animation things for, like, special scenes, like fight scenes or um, areas that will require a little bit more stylistic taste. We will include our frame-by-frame animators to uh, do. Currently, everyone on the animation team does have access to Moho, which is our main tweening animation software, but everyone seems to use different programs for the frame-by-frame side. So I know Ken Mm -hmm. used Krita, Shai, who's who's currently learning Moho currently. Uh, they have access to CSP, and I think um, Limonade also uses CSP for uh, her animation. So, out of our four animators at the moment, everyone's got Moho, everyone uses something else for frame by frame. And while I am the lead animator, I personally don't really care to do frame by frame all that much myself, so I let the, everyone else do that. And I leave it to their hands. Yeah, there's that. I, I I'd say you know maybe I'm being a little optimistic that we're gonna try to have more frame by frame in the future to like supplement some of the more um, uh, intricate or um, personal scenes, and it does take m- more time re- relatively upfront that when compared to um, twining, but it doesn't. It, it's not. It's not like and that much of an ungodly amount of time, and there's ways to kind of get around that. And I think the payoff's worth it. So we're, we're definitely going to try to do more frame-by-frame frame in the future, me yeah. thinks. 
we have done a couple experiments too where we've combined both elements so like i'd make one part in tween animation and then laminate would go over it and give it a shot and do frame by frame elements over the tween animation and it looks pretty good and pretty seamless um the main reason yeah. why i think we were going mostly with tween animation is just so we could keep we could not we could make you know episodes that come out more than once every four years so <laughs> that was the main thing it's like we can't leave people waiting for this 12 episodes series is what we're aiming at to come out yeah. within the next decade preferably so <laughs> Yeah. And, you, you know, um, you know, while we're on the topic, you know, any, any animators in the crowd? Um, <laughs> yep. <come. laughs> yeah. Pop on over. Yeah, we are actually open yeah. to collaborating, too. Um, if you guys ever, you know, want to do crossovers and things like that, we're always open to it. Um, we don't have any money right now, oh, but... Yeah, I mean, um, like, everything is volunteer. Maybe. Someone decided to be a little funny and tried to ask when I'm getting paid. Um, from myself, even though that would be pretty dang silly since I'm the one who kind of enforces that no one's getting paid except for, like, one person, which is a stowo for commission for music. So, basically, everything is out of pocket. We do say we're not going to run a Patreon or anything like that in the future, as far as we know, just because we, this is just 100% a passion project. So, anyways, let's see. That was our last question from from our our lineup. And let's see. We'll go ahead and open the stage for additional questions. We'll go ahead and read off questions, and we'll also take people on the stage. I see Mukwai. Hey, Mukwai wants, wants to speak. Go ahead and let him on. Um, do you plan to do a little crossover with us, our show? Um, Maybe. We'll see. I know. Uh, I know. Lots of, you know, trans-dimensional things could occur yeah, that was something pretty fun. that was something we we actually had joked about before but when you guys were talking about josie she get when she becomes she's josie the half cat if you guys find her other half then she's just josie the cat she's no longer special <laughs> get her a regular yeah. home she wouldn't be yeah. an SCP and you guys would have to get rid of her okay well, I mean, to be fair, yeah. her circumstances still made her anomalous. I actually, I forget how she even became Josie the half-cat sometimes. I don't she just, her yeah, honestly, I don't think she ever just became I think she just always was, as far as anyone's concerned. Yep. Oh, well, no. Site 13 also had its own um, interpretation for it. So, like, the same phenomenon that made that one agent lose his legs it was the same phenomenon that made Josie lose her back calf. So that was that was a thing. I remember being told one time that what happened was, like, she was, like, halfway through, like, a dimensional portal or something, and it closed off, so she just got, you know, halved. Yeah. Something like that. It could That's be right. multiple things, so. Right. Never been confirmed. Yeah, getting, getting back. canon, and everything's canon in this world, so. Yeah. On the on the topic of crossovers, yeah, yeah, we we'd be up to like cross crossover. We've met pretty much every like other SCP. Um, like up upstart animation channel to come out of confinement's downfall so you know you know anything can happen but how, how about we all get our first episodes out of the way and then we'll talk yeah, all right uh, it, goes you, it goes to you a little up too if you're if you're listening and in my last question if when josie eats food how how does she like process that according to the uh the um article it sounds like she just it's she she still behaves 100% like a regular cat. So, like, she'll even, like, the, make the motions and stuff, but, like, nothing, yeah. obviously, is deposited. It just vanishes so, inside. Just it vanishes. just disappears inside her. Pretty much. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to be leaving then because I got to go do some stuff. Right. Gray, Thanks for you have to fill me in later. All right. Goodbye. Later. All righty. Time to go through our comments on this side to see if we're missing. Hey, uh, Gray, when's the blackjack and hookers going to be added? <laughs> well, I mean, you saw the thumbnail for this Q&A is probably going to be the us playing blackjack. Um, and someone will probably be pulled off the stage with a hook. So there's that. There you go. Ha ha ha. So, okay. So it looks like from our first questions here from rambly is our releasing so release date for episode one hasn't been set yet he's asking will it be released like one episode or one episode by one or multiple episodes or a whole season at once or something so chances are it's going to be released episode by episode that's the reason why is just because each episode 
the the structure of this series is that it's voted on. So the SCP that's featured will be offered as a selection, and whichever SCP gets the most votes will be featured in that episode or the following episode. Now, it's also kind of why our production is a little chaotic and why we can't really, like, share exactly how the release schedule is going to be just because it's all based on that. Some SCPs will be automatically included. They're plot relevant and things like that to kind of keep our main story going. It's not really going to be too episodic, but it's, it is going to be a serial series. But we will try to give each SCP that we feature it's it, the limelight because they are the focus of the show. Yeah, also I think that way is just better because um, it gives us time to improve uh, uh, in terms of uh, audience feedback and more talent in between episodes than if we just released it all at once. Because then, because that way would just take like 80 years, you know. See, see you guys in 2090. Uh, also, all the episodes would probably be around like the same, probably really mid quality if we just did that. So, I think one out of the time is definitely the way to approach this strategically. So far, I see that is probably all the. Will there be more S OSTs? Yeah, there will be more OSTs. I'm sure as time goes on. Um, we actually have a list of copyright free music and stuff like that that we can utilize in the series. I'll go ahead. Oop, Ken died and he's back. All right. <laughs> I'll go ahead and add uh, some raccoon wanting to speak. So I'll go ahead and add him. In. Yo, how are you guys doing? We're hanging in there. All right, so I was thinking, right, the end of episodes, right, you leave it on a cliffhanger or something. You thinking maybe, like, you put a poll up, maybe the community decides how the next episode goes off, or you're going to do it on your own? We do have an overarching plot in mind. I think the only things being decided on polls are which SP will be featured in the next video. Yeah, and we already... And we already decide which um, SCPs are on the ballot. So, like, even ones, even the ones that we don't plan for, will already be like, you know, like the, acceptable. So, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the uh, elections are fake, just like real ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, democracy is not real. Mind you, this doesn't mean we do have a brainstorm channel. Um, so, if you do have suggestions for um, SCPs to include, because there have been, there are literally thousands that probably all of us have not read but maybe you know of that could be a good fit for the series. Uh, we're open to suggestions for even SCPs that might be of interest um, later on. All right, that's on tight. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I really had to ask, though, but yeah, thanks for the answer. Of course. Okay, we should be good. Yeah. Yes. Thanks later. for your... Thanks for your time, thanks for everyone. All your questions, everyone. Thanks, thanks, yes. thanks for the thanks for the thirty minutes of your day that, and the support for the series as a whole. It's much okay. appreciated. We wouldn't be here without you Thank guys. Thank you very much, everyone. And have a great well. What's left of it? Alrighty. See y'all later.